Welcome to Swagger's Lifestyle. Constructors by that time. Oh, yes. At first, he told them to build a place of armory or arsenal. When it was finished, it was used as an armory for eight months and then it was turned to a torture chamber. Whoever reached there, nobody who came out when he was alive, they all died from that place. Mm. But those are the political rivals, political threats, the intellectuals, and even the suspects are the ones whom they captured there. They used to kidnap you by blindfold you and put you into the boot of the car. Then they start driving you from morning up to evening. By the time you reach here, you can't estimate that you're still within Kampala City. You said that you're very far away. Yet you're still within Kampala City. They used to reverse a car up to this hump. There are some said there's each a line alongside this road with the guns. So when you reach there, it had a metallic gate which was electrified. It was filled with water in that corridor which was also electrified. It has five cells inside. When you reach there, they switch off the electricity in that you pass through the water which was there and then you enter the vessel I've told you. When you enter, they switch on in that the moment you want to escape, you'll not be able. Each cell had a sliding door which was there. Each cell has accommodating a hundred people inside. There isn't any ventilator, there isn't any window. People suffocated a lot inside there. Some were breathing, others were crying for help, but nowhere. Sometimes they are beaten inside there until they die. Sometimes they use a cell number and get outside and use a hammer. Start hammering them on their head, ankles, knees until they die. Sometimes they are put into the water which was electrified. They used to shock on and off electricity until they get the information they wanted. After revealing that information, they are shocked by electricity and then they die. When the dead bodies were very many, they are taken to different water bodies which you have within Uganda, like Lake Victoria, River Nile, Kings Lake. And they dump the little bodies inside there. They don't even bury them. Yeah. So Come approximately people who died from that place, nobody who knows the exact number. There are estimations from the soldiers. Some estimated 25,000 who died mm. from that place. Others 200,000 people. But the exact number is not there. Okay? And water, these are the metals of what we need, like you said, on the wall. We tell them that they put the ventilators, but those ventilators are not functioning at all. All the thing is underground. They only put on lights and removing the dead bodies or bringing other prisoners inside that are totally darkness. There are some written ones inside, or what was it say? Meaning that, what have killed me? But you've left my children hanging without toilet. I've been a father, but somebody is going to look after my children. Oh, they are a bottle yeah. on this side. So, when he came back as a bottle, he continued. Where are the dinners? He continued to train people. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is a fine class. This is where some, some words. I never forget my hands and words. I'm still the people of the world. 
Those are the people from Uganda and Uganda. They always visit this temple and pray for the people who have been for them. So only do the congregations. The Kumari is the people who have been Because it's under that. Just you know, recently after the third president. Oh, okay. Wow. This is the last cell which worked as a place of emotion. Sometimes when they had a lot of prisoners, yet these cells were all full. What they used to do is to separate the dead bodies from the people who are still alive. And all the dead bodies and rotten dead bodies were piled in the cells to sell, as if abiding sacks of beans. That's why it has the fingerprints and even footmarks on the wall. During that, we were collected and taken to different other bodies of the earth in Uganda. Black and rose races. The top is a Daimler, the other is a Cadillac, and those are the first of the rose races. When Obote came back as Obote too. He didn't want to know anything about King Mutasa II. Two of these cars were buried down there. Them and put it here so that officers can see what type of cars which King Mutasa II used to drive. They are still very expensive in that nobody in Uganda should own these cars. And the houses which you see down, they used to be the houses. <laughs> second biggest mosque in Africa and the first biggest is in Morocco Casablanca which was named King Hassan the second and this is the second biggest which is in Uganda Kampala city old Kampala hill this mosque was funded by the late colonel brother Muammar Gaddafi I hope you know him he was the former president of Libya the Republic of Libya and yeah, he met with our national Muslim leader, that was 2001, and then he requested him to help us and build this mosque. Okay? Before Gaddafi came in, this mosque was built way back in the 1970s by our former Ugandan president, Idi Amin Dada. He was a Muslim, but as Muslim faith during that time, we had no 
the headquarters as Muslims were just scattered. So when Amin captured power, he donated this land to the Muslim community. And fortunately, he only dug the foundation of this structure. His government became stubborn and also turned a dictator, and he was overthrown in 1979. So the structure remained incomplete for over 30 years, until the year 2001, that's when Gaddafi had visited, visiting our country, and then he met with our national Muslim leader. His title is His Eminence, the Mufti of Uganda, and he requested Gaddafi to help us and resume it. Gaddafi accepted, and the old structure, which was built during Amini's time, it was substandard and it was demolished, and then they began with a new foundation. That was 2003. By 2006, it was completed. <laughs> And officially, it was handed over to the Ugandans in 2008. So this happened to be our main mosque called. Down here is for me, and the upper section is for the ladies. Gaddafi was here in 2008 with 10 heads of African students. And it's full capacity, it accommodates 35,000 people. 25,000 men down here, and then 10,000 female at the balcony. And then we have another ex another extension down, and it's where we hold our daily worship. Here it is for the special prayers like Friday prayers, Yudhi celebrations, wedding ceremonies with other annual Islamic events. And that's why you've met when it is empty on a daily basis. We will only open it for the special guests like you who have come to tour around the mosque. So feel free, feel at home, take more pictures, as many as you wish, and then we proceed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Wow. Hey. Hey. Wow. When I was halfway, <laughs> so, like this. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. Wow. So, they are made out of Mokemia tree, and the setting is the smaller depression, the higher the tongue, the, the, the sound, and the bigger the depression, can open. The bigger the depression, the deeper the sound. So that's the setting. Oh. Then we also 
also have the drums. The drums also sound differently. Now they out of the uh, skin. Uh -huh. And there's a bit of wood in. They sound different. They were also made for uh, making music. And Swag, swag, swag.